Hey guys, it's Alden Hoffman here. This will be my first ever review. I'm going to be doing it on Skater XL, as you already know. So, Skater XL, created by Easy Day Studios, was initially set to release way back on December 19th, 2018, but ended up being released just under two months ago on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox on July 28th, 2020. When I first heard about this game coming to console, I must admit I was pretty excited. It's been 10 years since Skate 3 was released and consoles have been lacking any good skateboarding or BMX games for a long time. When it comes to gameplay, the premise is simple. You use your controllers, left and right thumbsticks to control either foot respectively. And for the most part, this works really well. Where the controls slip is when turning and lining up tricks. I have found myself taking a long time to line up rails for grinds and jumps over obstacles due to having to use the back triggers to steer the board, and there's definitely a learning curve from that aspect. What the game doesn't tell you is that you don't have to use the back triggers to turn left and right. While not ideal, you can use your back foot to steer the board and your front foot to make minor adjustments. Because of this fact, unless you're going to put a lot of time into playing this game, it feels like pulling off long lines of tricks around areas of the map will be difficult. Especially when you add in all the different motions that you are doing with your thumbs alone. But this game definitely has some potential if you're looking to play games of horse, also known as Skate with Friends. Or when it comes to running sessions and spots around the park, it's actually pretty fun from that side of things. But accidentally doing ollies, nollies or some types of shove it while lining up tricks can get a bit annoying. When only using the thumbsticks for position. And using the back triggers to steer is probably going to feel completely foreign to many of you, myself included. The graphics are not bad, but they aren't great either. But this is a new developer and I'm sure they will definitely improve over time. When it comes to bugs and glitches on the other hand, this game needs some work and feels like they really didn't do enough testing before release. Be it legs glitching into floors, passing straight through solid objects like walls, rails and even cars, or ending up rocking stationary side to side endlessly in a board slide. There is work needing to be done to correct those issues and I'm sure there are many bugs that I haven't come across yet. Also, there are only 8 skate parks and only 3 of them are of a decent size to find good spots to session. Hopefully we will see more interesting larger parks in the near future. Now, the music isn't anything to write home about. It will not be fondly remembered like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games which had some of the best soundtracks for games back when they released. And in fact, I had my first copyright claim put against me with my first stream at this game. I only have 13 subs at this time and can't make money off of any of those videos that I make anyway. So it feels kind of petty, especially when the music isn't really that good. How would I rate this game? At a 10, it would have to be around a 6, 6.5. It was originally lower than that. But after I sat back down with the game for a about an hour or two, it's actually pretty fun. It is just lacking in some areas, just like this review. With some bigger maps and some bug fixes, it could probably be closer to an 8 out of 10 in my books. We'll just have to see what Easy Day can do to improve on those aspects. If you've made it to here, thanks for watching. If you played the game or are thinking of playing it, feel free to leave a comment on what you think of it. And as I always like to say, take it easy.